Hey guys, my name is Becca and welcome to my February book haul. Now, not only am I showing the books that I bought for the month of February, I also am showing you the uh, library books that I got and the books I got as gifts and I also want a giveaway. So I'm going to be showing you that as well. Um, there's not that many. The reason why there's so many encompassing in this video is because there's not that many books. I literally, like, I showed you, um, the bulk of my, sh uh, the books that I bought in my January book haul because I got them in, like, the very beginning of the month and so I just, you know, incorporated those into that. I thought I'd buy more books in February, but the books that I planned on buying came out the very end of February and I still have yet to get those. So those are going to be in my March book haul for sure. But yeah. So my March book haul might be might be a little larger than this and that's just yeah. Um but first we're going to go through the library books that I got in February. I got uh I got 6, which isn't bad. But as you can tell, like from over here, I, I'm not reading them. I'm trying to. Like, I really want to read them. But for some reason, I'm just gravit- Like, every time I make a TBR, I just gravitate towards all the books that are on my shelves. And not the books that I've gotten from the library. So yeah, I need to stop doing that. I need to start prioritizing books that I get from the library. Or just return them. But I really want to read these. Like, they're all books that I would really like to read. So, yeah. Let's go on. Let's get into the books that I got from the library. So, the first book is uh, a book that I might have read during Contemporary Thon. I just didn't have a whole lot of time. I got this, like, at the tail end of uh, the readathon. But everybody was reading it and talking about it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm just going to get it. And hopefully, I'm going to love it. And that is A Heart and the Body in the World, right? A Heart and a Body in the World by Deb Coletti. I really, all I know about this is that our main character suffers like a trauma and decides to run from Seattle to Washington, D.C. That is all I know. I know there's like a grandfather in this who drives an RV and follows her, if I remember correctly. That's how it is. And all I know is that it's going to make me sob like a baby. But that's it. I'm hoping to love this. I really am. Because everybody loves this book. So that's why I picked this up. Another one I picked up uh, because of Contemporary Thon is Jack of Hearts and Other Parts by Elsie Rosen. Yeah. Uh... I think this is about a guy who gives sexual advice, right? Uh, Jack is unapologetic, unapologetically queer. Uh, okay, rumors about Jack's unapologetically queer sex life swirl around the high school he attends in New York City. It's true that Jack has a lot of sex, and he's not ashamed of it. Though he's always a star of gossip in the hallways, and there is the occasional homophobe in his class. Jack's motto in life is that it could be worse. But then the worst unexpectedly strikes when Jack starts writing a teen sex advice column for online site. He, uh, he begins to receive creepy and threatening love letters that attempts to force Jack to curb his sexuality and personality. Yeah. They love this book. Um, Chelsea and Julie read this for the readathon and loved it. And it just... I, I really want to read this. All right, uh, let's just, the last contemporary book, not because of contemporary thon, but it is a contemporary book, and that is uh, Famous in a Small Town by Emma Mills. I've read a couple of Emma Mills books and really enjoyed them, so I'm hoping to really enjoy this one, though I have no idea what this is about. <sighs> okay, so for Sophie, small town life has never felt small, or felt small, with her four best friends loving, infuriating, and all she could ever ask for. She can weather any storm. But when Sophie's beloved Acadia High School marching band is selected to march in the upcoming Rose Parade, it's her job to get them all the way to L.A. 
Her plan? To persuade country singer Megan Pleasant, their Midwestern town's only claim to fame, to come back to Acadia to headline a fundraising festival. The only problem is that Megan is very publicly sworn never to return. What ensues is a journey filled with long kept secrets, hidden heartbreaks, and revelations that could change everything, along with a possible fifth best friend, a new guy with a magnetic smile, and secrets of his own. We'll see if I like this one. It doesn't like call to me, but I have really enjoyed Emma Mills' books before. So, I'm hoping to love this. Okay, and then the last three are fantasy. One, I really, like, I actively was trying to find because I really wanted it. And the other two, um, I, I saw and I was like, I, I'll pick it up. Um, so for the one I was, like, actively trying to find, and believe me, I was searching the library every day to see if they got it in because I really wanted this book. And it's, it's, it's an adult fantasy, so it's pretty expensive. And that is Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. I really wanted to read this book. It says, when destiny calls, there's no fighting back. Kieran grew up in the slums of Quir. Quir? I have no idea how to say it. It's Q-U-U-R. A thief and a minstrel's son raised on tales of long lost princes and magnific magnificent quests. When he is claimed against his will as the missing son of a treasonous prince, Kieran finds himself at the mercy of his new family's ruthless power, plays and political, or power plays and political ambitions. And I believe Piera from Pierre Ford really loved this book. So I'm excited. I did read uh, like the first couple chapters. I got a uh, sample from Amazon so I could, you know, see if I would really like it. Um, and I was starting to like it. There's a lot of names, a lot of terms that just like can go over my head, but it's the first few chapters and I have a feeling that I'm going to love it like right you know as I continue on so I'm excited all right and the last two so first up we have damsel by Elena K Arnold Alana K Arnold I couldn't think of how to say the name for a second I have gotten this in the library before I might have shown this before but I had to return it because I didn't have enough time to read it jokes on me I had three months I didn't read it I hate myself but I just know that this is about dragons and I really do want to read it. I've heard good things. So why haven't I read it yet? I have no idea. But um, it's about a prince who uh, rescues a damsel from a dragon. But Alma, the damsel, uh, when she wakes up in, uh, in his arms, uh, she has no memory of what came before she was captured by the dragon. Or what horror she faced in its lair. And, of course, he rescued her to be his bride. Um, I have thoughts on what, like, the plot twist could be. And if it is, that would be awesome. But, I really want to read it. It's very short. I should be able to just pick it up. And the last one I just saw there, and I've been seeing some buzz about it. And that is Stolen Time by Danielle Rollins. I, I really have no idea what this is about. Uh, centuries tore them apart. Fate will bring them back together. Already, I'm intrigued. Seattle, 1913. Dorothy is trapped. Okay. Forced to wed a wealthy man so she and her mother can live comfortably for the rest of their days. She'll do anything to escape, including sneaking away from her wedding and bolting into the woods to disappear. New Seattle, 2077. Okay. So, way in the future. That's nice. Ash is on a mission, rescue the professor, his mentor, who figured out the secret to time travel, so together they can put things right in their devastated city. But endless jumps through time have left Ash plagued by pre-memories of what's to come, a violent death and his heart torn apart. When Dorothy collides with Ash, she sees it, it is her chance to start fresh. She'll stow away in this plane and begin a new life wherever they land. Then she wakes up in a future that's been ripped apart by earthquakes and floods, where vicious gangs rule the sub submerged city streets and a small group of intrepid travelers from across time are fighting against the odds to return things to normal. What Dorothy doesn't know is that she she could hold the key to unraveling the past, but her arrival may spell Ash's ultimate destruction. Okay. Sounds good. 
So those are all the books that I got from the library. Now, let's talk about the books that I bought. And then we'll go into the books that I got as gifts and my giveaway, which is the box I have to unbox. Okay, so the two books that I bought, at least that I can remember buying. I don't remember buying any other books but these. So, I'm pretty sure. Because the only other books I believe I bought in February were in the very beginning, and those I showed in my January book haul. So, yeah. Okay, so the only two that I got were both from Half Price Books. Um, the first one is The Bone Witch by Rin Chepeco. I have been wanting to pick this up for a while, um, and I just haven't done it. I, I've been, like, really skeptical because I've heard mixed things, but this cover is gorgeous, like, really gorgeous, and it was only, like, five fifty, and I had a 10% off coupon, so it was even cheaper, so I decided to just pick it up and hope that I liked it, and it was in relatively good condition. There's really nothing wrong with it. So I'm just like, I might as well pick it up and hope that I like it. And I know this is about, is it about necromancy? It says, uh, let me be clear, I never intended to raise my brother from his grave. The beast raged, it punctured with air, or punctured the air with its spite, but the girl was fiercer. Fiercer. I can't talk. Mm, is it Taya? T? What the hell is her name? I'm going to go Taya because I'd rather be Taya. Uh, Taya is different from the other witches in her family. Her gift for necromancy, hello, makes her a bone witch who are feared and ostracized in the kingdom. For theirs is a powerful elemental magic that can reach beyond the boundaries of the living and of the human. Great power comes at a price, forcing Taya to leave her homeland to train under the guidance of an older, wiser bone witch. There, Taya puts all her energy and into becoming an Asha, learning to control her elemental magic and those beasts who will, su who will submit by no other force. And Taya must be strong, stronger than she even believes possible, because war is brewing in the Eight Kingdoms, war that will threaten the so sovereignty of her homeland and threaten the very survival of those she loves. Lyrical and action-packed, the start of a new fantasy series by acclaimed author Rin Chepeco will leave you breathless. And I know, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe the trilogy is over. Like, it's completed. I think Heartforger and Shadowglass, are those the... Uh, are those it? Oh, of course it doesn't tell me. Okay. I think those are the la the other two. <coughs> and if Shadowglass hasn't come out yet, it is coming out. And I believe uh, Mel from Mel to the Any love this trilogy, so... I'm going to trust her. And then the other book I got is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palperto. And all I know about this is that it's about a phoenix writer and there's a lot of words so I'm not going to read it. Uh, but it says, I had a sister once. I promised her the throne would not come between us. But it is a fact of life that one must kill or be killed, rule or be ruled. Sometimes the title of queen is given, sometimes it must be taken. And it's about phoenix writers. I mean... Ah. And there's two sisters. I'm thinking I'm really going to love this. I'm hoping I'm really going to love this. It says, I am a daughter of death. From the ashes I rose like a phoenix from the pyre. It sounds so good. I had to pick this up. I really, really was looking forward to this book. And I'm excited for it. Alright. So, um, let's talk about the books that I got as gifts from my friends. Uh, so I got three books and two movies, so I'll just show you the movies really quick. Uh, I got Anything for Love, uh, which features Erica Christensen and Paul Green. Paul Green is my favorite, like, Hallmark, um, Hallmark movie actor. Uh, I don't care what movie he's in, I literally have to watch him. I love Paul Green, which, that is Paul Green. That is Paul Green, or that is Paul Green. <laughs> doesn't matter. I just, I love him so much. And, well, my friend knows me very well, and I want to collect all of the movies he's in. And my other friend got me the, I think the only other Doctor Who movie I needed, Time of the Doctor. So, yay. I have all the 
Doctor Who movies. I hate, okay, so I hate Jenna Coleman. I'm sorry. I hate her in here as Clara. I might like her in other things, but as Clara, she's annoying. I'm sorry. Matt Smith is my second favorite doctor. No. Mm, no, I'm sorry. Oh, no. Yeah, he's my second favorite doctor. It's really, okay, Chris Eccleston, David Tennant, and Matt Smith. I love all three of them. David Tennant is for sure my favorite. <sighs> Matt Smith has like the best, he has my favorite episode. Mm. So I have, uh, it's really hard because it's a toss up between him and Christopher Eccleston, which Christopher Eccleston only had one season and Matt had like three. So I really love, oh, uh, and Matt has pretty much my favorite, um, my favorite com companion because she's not technically a companion. I love River. I love River so much. And, uh, like, you meet her with David Tennant, but she's prominent in Matt Smith's era. So, yeah, I'm just going to go with Matt Smith as my second favorite, and then Chris Falkelson is my third favorite. I love them so much. So, my friends know me really well. They know I love Doctor Who and Paul Green. Uh, and then I got three books, and two of them I have already read, and one I have not. The one I have not is the third book in the... Uh, I don't even remember what the series is, but the f third book in the series, it's called The One You Fight For by Ronnie Lauren. The Ones Who Got Away was the first one, and The One You Can't Forget is the second one. This one follows uh, Taryn, who is another friend you meet in the first book, part of that friend group, and her love interest is Shaw, the um, brother of the shooter, or one of the shooters. I think there were two. I think there was only one that everyone was, like, really talking about. But, yes. Her love interest is the brother of the guy who shot the school up. Uh-oh. Yes. This is gonna be... This is definitely gonna be one that... Oh, man. This is definitely gonna be one I can't wait to read. Um, so, yeah. I had to pick... Uh, my friend... So, technically, I bought this for her, but she had already, um, she already pre-ordered it, which I didn't know, uh, so I am getting her something else, and I'm just keeping this for myself because I needed it as well. So, it works out for me, and it works for her because she's going to get another book, and she's going to be very happy. So, the two that I read, I'm so excited because I really wanted these books so bad, and I just... Couldn't justify picking them up because I haven't read them yet, but she got me Sweet Addiction by Jay Daniels, which you guys know I loved last year. I like loved this book so much, but I read this on my Kindle. <sighs> I, I just want to reread this like right now. I love Dylan and um, Reese so much, and now I got to get the other one so I can, well, there's three technically. So I'm going to get the other two. I haven't read the third one, but I'm planning on doing that soon. I'm so happy that I got this. And the other one she got me is Dirty Headlines by LG Shen. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I did not enjoy The Kiss Thief by LG Shen, which I read for Contemporary Thon, and I did not enjoy it. So that happens. But I really enjoyed this one, and I'm glad to have this. The, uh the main male character in this is such an asshole and it just speaks to me I don't know why okay so lastly we have hmm, how am I gonna do this we have the unboxing um so I got uh, I want a giveaway from Julie over pages and pens uh, for contemporary thon it was uh, the giveaway she host the she hosted at the end. Uh, if you filmed a wrap up, or was it a weekly re uh, weekly vlog, like a, a vlog style wrap up or just a regular wrap up, uh, you could post it on her channel and she would pick a winner for the giveaway. And I won, and I'm so happy. It was amazing. I loved Contemporary Thon, um, and I I'm just so happy that I won. 
Thank you so much, Julie, again for hosting that giveaway, for hosting the readathon. It was, it was amazing. Thank you. Um, I got two books actually. One I got on my Kindle, and the other one I got sent to me. The Kindle one I got was Once Ghosted, Twice Shy by Alyssa Cole, which is the novella to the uh, Reluctant Royals series. Uh, the first one being a princess in theory, the second one being a duke by default. I read the second one for Contemporary Thon, so that I got on my Kindle, and I'm very, very happy I did. Though I'm also planning on getting that as a physical copy because I want it to match, um, match the ones on my shelves. But I am very happy I got it on my Kindle. I'm also going to be <laughs> listening to the audiobook. I just I have it on all the platforms then, and I'll be good. I just got to get it for uh, physical, but. I'm really excited because I did ask for one other book. Ah, I hate it when these things have, like, the ones you gotta, like, poke. Oh, I hate that so much. I might have to, like, rip it. Um, but I am really excited for this one because I was going to buy this for myself, but then I won the giveaway and I decided, you know, why not just ask for it? Ah! Because I really needed this. <sighs> the Blood Spell by CJ Redwine. I'm so happy I have this. And I'll match the ones on my shelves. I love this series. I have yet to read this one. I did get it from the library. And I was playing and reading it from the library. But then I could get the physical copy. So I'm so happy that I got this. And again, thank you so much, Julie. <sighs> You're amazing. Thank you. Um... But yeah, I'm so happy. This is the fourth book in the Ravenspire series. I don't know if there's going to be more. I'm hoping there's going to be more. I love this series. Uh, but this is the fourth book, and this follows Cinderella. So, <laughs> I'm so excited. Ah. Okay, so that is all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all again with another video. <laughs> Bye. Happy reading.